So what I wanted to show you this week for the case of the week is something that we're launching at Chicago Midwinter um, this week, and it's actually called uh, CloudPoint. It's really designed for laboratories, but you can see a dentist kind of using this as well. It's a model scanner, and so it's something we use here in the laboratory, and it's our way of uh, getting a case into the digital environment um, without having an intraoral scan, because most dentists today still aren't taking digital impressions. It's only about 12% of the impressions we receive, and on the rest of them, they're polyvinyl and polyether, and as a result, we still have to pour it up uh, into a stone model, and then we scan the stone models to get it into the digital environment. That's why when a dentist actually scans the patient's mouth and sends us a digital impression, we don't have to do any of the stuff I'm going to show you with the cloud point, and that's why we give them um, $20 off because they save us all the time of having to pour it, articulate it, saw out the dye, pour a solid model, and then scan it all. So it's interesting. So a dentist could theoretically get this cloud point unit, put it in their office, take a regular polyvinyl impression like they usually did, have their assistant pour the model, and then scan the model and send us or another laboratory the digital information and save $20. And the price of this is about $11,000, which is cheaper than just about all the intraoral scanners that are out there. Uh, plus, you don't have to put anything in the patient's mouth. You take an impression just like you would now but you wouldn't save on the polyvinyl like you do with a digital impression. So let me just show you how it actually works. Um, again, once the models are poured, they're affixed to a little uh, plate that you can see in there, a platform with some putty. And the device is actually going to scan it with a, a blue light, and you can see it turning it at several different angles. And so typically, um, you had to take, you had to move uh, a laser light around or you had to do it by hand to be able to scan all of these. But now it's going to scan it all at the same time. You can see the, um, the die with the uh, margins trimmed on the very middle uh, of the plate as it tips it to its seven predetermined positions. And then you can see uh, the solid model with the prep on it to the left. And then you can see the opposing model over there. And then over on the right, you can see the acquisition screen as it actually gets all this information and, and starts to put it together. And so by grabbing it at all these different angles and then stitching it together, it's able to pick up this information, not unlike if you had a digital impression unit in the patient's mouth and you were moving it from uh, buccal to lingual, mesial to distal in the patient's mouth. But of course, the big advantage here is there's no tongue, uh, there's no saliva. And so you can see it took just over a minute uh, to get both arches and the dye by itself. And that's definitely faster than you would see uh, with any intraoral scanner. It takes a little bit longer um, to do that. And so you can see that little blue area now where it's taken the dye that was sawed out of there and correlated it with the solid model. So it's identified those two teeth and then it's able to articulate those two models together. And again, you can see the gray and the yellow uh, showing where there's areas uh, where it's come together and it correlates and it finds the bite for those two. Uh, you can also design your restoration uh, if you want to using the software and you can see that it automatically marks the margin for you. But if there's kind of an indistinct margin like there is on this tooth, you can pull it and adjust it and put the margin wherever you want to. And then it proposes a crown and rotates it uh, into place. It, it takes uh, from the anatomy library that we have in the cloud and brings down the most likely crown for that, puts it into place, and then uh, matches up the marginal ridges and the width of the cusps with the adjacent tooth. And you can certainly play with that as much or as little as you want. You can set the occlusion so it's in contact with the opposing tooth, or you can set the occlusion so that it's slightly out of contact with the opposing tooth, just in case your assistance temporary uh, isn't as accurate uh, as it should be. You can adjust the contact and to close it or open it as much as you'd want. You know, we I prefer my crowns with a five micron space opening between the designed crown and the adjacent tooth. This makes sure that if we get any movement of the tooth with the temporary on, which is always going to be in a mesial direction, that I'm not going to have a tight contact when it comes time uh, to actually seat that crown. So yes, this was intended for laboratories. Maybe it's something that, uh, that your laboratory wants to get involved with so you can start to take advantage of having the exact same amount of die spacer, the exact proximal contact, the exact occlusal contact. Or maybe you even want to be a red and gate dentist who starts to pour uh, their own models and trim a die and scan it, send it to a lab to save $20 as well. So whether you get involved with it or recommend it to your lab, uh, 
CloudPoint uh, looks to be a, a new way for dentists and laboratories to get involved with digital dentistry and really start to take advantage of the CAD CAM uh, design and therefore the CAD CAM milling of restorations that have really brought remakes down here in our laboratory for the majority of our dentists.